Hello, dear viewer, and welcome to the showcase and review of Symphony of War, the Nephilim Saga. With me, Jalen Otto, Lunar Nebula Gaming. So, what to know about Symphony of War? Think of it as Fire Emblem, but you get to build up squads of units with your main characters, and kind of like Ogre Battle at the same time, where you have those squads of units and you can move around maps and things. There's also a tech tree. There are some options if you want to do stuff with that. Just note, uh, I do use OBS to record this, and when I tried to put it in full screen to record, it didn't quite work. So windowed mode worked better for me with OBS. But other than that, there's a lot of cool stuff you could do. Without further ado, let us load one of my mini saves. Now, for those of you who like to save your game a lot and have different saves, uh, Symphony of War, it's got you covered. Let's see, wasn't it 90? Yeah, it's 90 save slots, which you do not need if you're just saving per chapter. As you can tell, I have beaten the game. Uh, there are different endings, and as I remember from looking it up online, you can actually get the other ending just by having a different choice within kind of a cutscene. So you could save mid-battle in this chapter 30, Armageddon, and potentially do that quickly if you wanted to. Oh yeah. Or you know, you could go like what I played probably 50 hours total because I did a lot of extra stuff and I also took some breaks while the client was running. So keep that in mind as well. But I'd say there was a good 50 hours of playtime in there because I tried to up my people to the highest levels I could without destroying my brain. So, yes, we've done all of that. And let's go into this chapter right here. So what is Symphony of War generally like? What do parents need to know? Hmm. Well, I think, in my humble opinion, I am H.O., that the game should be rated teen for moderate profanity. There's some dark themes here. There's some cultists trying to take over the world and you're trying to stop them. Uh, there's some romantic relationships that you can have your units kind of support each other and become bonded. There's nothing, you know, really explicit or anything in that. It's just, oh, hey, we like each other and so on and so forth. But yeah, I also don't know if that has any other bearing than on the epilogues at the end of the game, because that does appear to change some of the epilogues with the characters. So that is interesting. Other than that, the main meat and potatoes of the game are these squads. As you can see, you have a maximum of nine units in a squad. And with that, you have one leader. In general, your very good main character units are the best leaders to have in the game. There are different affinities that can affect leadership, which is kind of the capacity for putting units into a squad. So as you can see, we have 102 on this main guy, who I, you know, named Jono. <laughs> However, on this guy, he's another main character who's not necessarily designed to be the best leader. So he's only got a leadership of 71, but well, that's still pretty good. So compared to other units we could hire at the marketplace, so recruits, as you can see, the normal base level recruit, recruits have about 35 leadership, whereas we could get some higher level ones that are about 45, and that's, that's generally the case. Now leadership does grow as you level, but you can also seize objectives and things and get that as well. So. What to say? I would say, in terms of difficulty, probably middle school and up would enjoy this game. Uh, once again, moderate profanity and stuff, so if you think your kids could handle, say, oh, a PG-13 movie, they're probably good with this one, probably. But once again, moderate profanity, some people dying on screen being killed on screen and usually it's these little sprites not even like the really detailed ones so not even these it's more like these one guy shoves a sword and suicides for reasons that become apparent later in the story but uh yeah yeah so there's some dark stuff once again but other than that mechanically highly enjoy the game highly enjoyable here's our tech tree i've already filled it out by this point but you start unlocking these as you gain these uh, 
resource points. I can't remember exactly what they're called. <laughs> Reputation points. But eventually you get to the point where you unlock everything and for all the points you get, you get another Medal of Valor, which can increase units' leadership and thus their capacity for putting more units in your squad. There are different mechanics like uh, loyalty as well, which can change how expensive a unit is to put in a squad, which is pretty cool. So yeah, as you can see here, professionalism gives you full loyalty to the cause by the end of the game, which is very good. And honestly, looking back at this, hmm, I think I would recommend either going this route first or this route, but dragons are fun. So if you like flying dragons, go for this route. Anyway. Let's go ahead and check out, I believe, yeah, there's some arenas as well. So if you do like min-maxing your units to be as powerful as can be, you can go ahead into an arena. You pick up these tokens somewhat randomly, but you can also buy them from markets and things. And then we can put in some units. So we'll put in our main people right now, showcase how the game works. Okay, and then I do have a dragon rider unit, so they're flying. Excellent, okay. Anybody else different? I will take you. Okay, so to showcase a little bit of this, as you can see, we've got each of our units in here. Now, every squad can have up to three artifacts once you've unlocked that ability. And those artifacts can drastically change how your squad functions. So my main character squad actually takes 10% of his HP in damage at the end of every turn in order to get really good buffs to their stats. Other than that, I've also given him a potion so that every battle, before the enemy attacks, somebody gets healed by about 100 HP. So it's a pretty good combo, pretty good combo. I've really enjoyed it throughout the game. Uh, we do have mages and things, gunners, and in general, we'll see how that plays out. But other than that, there's also, if we hover over here, I'm gonna move my face cam. Here we go. So, if we hover over these, you can also get a general layout of, you know, your unit, who's in there, what kind of movement they have. So this is an infantry unit, so it'll move six tiles in general. And its morale is excellent. Morale is important because that dictates in general how strong your attacks will be. So good morale means your guys attack more powerfully. If you lose a leader unit or lose enough units, take enough damage, your morale goes down, so you also deal less damage, which is a very good mechanic in my opinion. Now this guy can fly, because three dragon riders are flying units. This is the ultimate dragon promotion, and they're beautiful, and I love them. But, as you can also see, oh, Torax, in the bottom left, which I may now be covering a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna move the face cam again. Torax over here has a trait learnable, so you can actually give most units in the game extra traits, like this Colossal or Committed. So dragons are generally huge, so they can't dodge, they always take damage basically. And Committed means this guy is cheaper to put into my units. Now other traits are stuff like Warrior's Hubris, where a unit gains resistance in Magician and Dragon attacks as strength increases. Joy! So yes, you can get some good traits in here that you collect throughout the game. You just feed them to your units individually. And that's honestly the most time-consuming part, I would say, of the game, is kinda as you go, I would recommend giving people traits and skill-ups and stat-ups. Because if you wait till the end like I did, it's a lot of button pressing <laughs> to get everybody just leveled up. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and begin the mission. All right, so here's our five units we can bring into the arena. In the actual campaigns, you will eventually get to a point where you can have up to 20 units at one time, which is a fantasy made real and also a lot to deal with sometimes, so expect some of the battles to go pretty long. However, you can just right click on the um, Steam version. You can go to System, you can quick save, quick load, and all that stuff if you ever run out of time. Uh, other things to note, you can look up mission info at any time during the mission. So we basically just need to make sure our base doesn't get captured, and we do want to try to win within six turns to get the best ranking Ready. possible. So we can also right-click and do enemy move. We can see 
enemies can move and attack up to here. Unfortunately, clicking anything else gets you out of that. So that's kind of bad. Uh, other things to note, they did update the game as I was playing it during my playthrough. This is currently what it's like. The day, the weather, and all that stuff will change, and that can affect some units in various ways. So say you don't have the ability to traverse through snow as easily, you lose some movement. Some people can, my as Tundra Warrior. From my homeland. And that can Stay be strong, affected. Everyone. Also note, Jules here has bows. I gave him a lot of bowmen. And if we put him on a hill, he can actually shoot even further with his bows, which is pretty good. So we're gonna do that. We could put somebody in this forest right here, and if they have units capable of ambushing, then we can get that off. Um, do you have an ambush unit? Gorilla on you. Mm, no, you don't have ambush anymore. I am sad. But oh well. We might still be able to get it. I don't think I have an artifact with that on him. But maybe I do. Helena, I gave extra boots of movement. So she has nine movement. As you can see, we can go all the way up here. And I probably will. Um... Yeah, her morale is worse as a result, so she might not do quite as much damage as we want. But now, here's another thing in the game. You can choose what you want to try to do to your opponents. You can actually try to force surrenders, and if they surrender, you get more money out of it, you get more reputation points, things like that. However, if we choose to, say, target the leader to try to decrease their morale, we actually also become more accurate while losing the ability to evade as well. So if we had a really evasive unit, this might be a poor decision. If we want to just deal as much damage as possible, we're going to go aggressive to just deal as much damage as possible. Now we have our rows and columns, and we're going to enter combat. Ah, uh, yes. Combat! So as you see, we've taken out their front row. We couldn't go past their front row with these units, but some units can attack through or the entire row. So those are pretty powerful units once you get those. In general, oh, right, as cavalry, we also have extra movement. So kind of like the Kanto ability in Fire Emblem. Uh, you have enough movement, we'll put you up here. And nobody should be able to reach. Yeah, if we just want to check out the individuals, we can do that. Now, enemies on bases and stuff usually don't move, but it's always worth checking because sometimes they'll surprise you. And once again, we've just got to make sure nobody makes it to our base. Uh -huh. All right, then. Now, this is going to be a fast enough battle. We probably won't be able to use our Nephilim powers. But about halfway through the game, uh, some of your characters will develop Nephilim powers, which will allow you to do cool things on the map, like teleport a unit, move a unit again, etc., etc. All right. Excellent. And as you see, I have, in general, a good variety of units to most of my squads. Some squads, not as much variety, depending on what you want to do. So, like, with our archers... I like being able to have a mass volley of arrow fire. So as you can see, we have four range on Jules while he's on this mountain. However, if I move him off, let's do a normal attack. He only has three range, because the mountain gives him more range, which is cool. Now, important note, not all of his units can fire at this extreme range. Only his war bows can, so that little horseman in the front at the top is not actually going to deliver any arrows here. We get our ambush. Okay, you know what, we'll just we'll showcase that. So ambush is a thing where you get one attack off and they can't counterattack. In general, most extreme ranged fire or arcing shots from bows or anything like that, siege cannons, will do one attack. But you can get free actions, which is what that little free action that popped up at the end there was. The thing is, they were all dead, so it didn't matter. And our healer didn't get a free action, so, you know. Or if the healer did, we didn't need it. I love so we're good. Right. Now, things to keep in mind, always try to get first hits on gunners before they hit you, because they hit hard. Uh, the mages, similar idea. So we'll go over here with Stefan, and we are going to go... And we'll go cautious. That means we deal less damage, but we take a lot less damage, too. Oh, we get our ambush. So we also have some assassins with Stefan, and they're all going to sneak attack the back row first. Boink. All right, so there we go. And Stefan, as he leveled up, 
he was able to get his cool Nephilim ability of constantly attacking the back row. Unlike these guys, they only do it once. They're just scrubs compares. But oh well. Oh well. Now, we need to have our dragon go ahead and take out these gunners. Now, dragon fire, as you may expect, is kind of an AoE attack. So, not a problem. Not a problem. Wonderful. But guns, on the other hand, yeah, they're very powerful. Okay, you can almost make it to our place. That's not great. We'll have Helena worry about this. And we should be fine. We have some anti-cavalry technology called Big Pointy Sticks. And they work. So we're fine. They're not fine. We're fine. But yes, hitting hard and hitting first are generally the things you want to do in this game. Of course, there are large armies that will try to prevent you from being able to do that. I must uh, it kind of makes sense, kind of makes sense, you know. So, let's go cautious so that we don't lose our main guy anytime soon. It's probably not going to happen. There we go. And we're doing fine. As you saw, we had, like, AoE stuff and all that. Levels in this game are surprisingly easy to come by until you out-level your opponents. So, right now, they're at level 48. We're at 47, so probably everybody here can level pretty easily for another two levels in comparison to the enemies. So we will do this. Hopefully I can pull off a very nice Nephilim power before the end, but I don't think we can. Okay. But yeah, there's a lot of mechanics in this game. There's a fantastic tutorials that you can look up at any time, kind of like a codex book that you can just read through whenever. So one thing to note is that pole arms are in general more powerful when they are next to each other. They gain, I think, 15% damage bonuses and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. Nope, none of my powers are charged yet, so that's unfortunate. Getting real thirsty. Mm. We're going to go ahead over here with Stefan. I'm going to go ahead and be aggressive because that's what Stefan is good at, poking things. All right, there's our dazed ability that decreases the amount of damage they deal with strength attacks. But stuns are what we were looking for. That's more helpful. So yes, Stefan has defeated this enemy. However, it does not instantly finish this level. We have to seize the objective for that. So, we get some gold because of a thievery trait, we will which is excellent. Um, you know what? I'm also going to showcase. Strong, you can always go in close with archers and gunners and things. And they can actually get two attacks off that way. However, they're not going to be as tough as melee units designed for melee combat. Go figure. But yeah, oh, now we have our powers up. So I'll showcase Terror. Terror is a Nephilim power you get last, but it allows you to affect morale of all enemy units within this 3x3. Three three. Unfortunately, it's not going to showcase it for me. Hmm. Medium. Okay. Similar idea, Meteor deals damage to things. However, you may notice here, it is not highlighting a red square on this place. So, forts and things you cannot actually cast Meteor on. That is important to note. And it does about 25% of an enemy's health. It will not outright destroy them as far as I'm aware. Uh, other things you can do, you can heal units. Infantry units can shuffle with each other. You're not an infantry unit, but jewels. Is. So we can shuffle, you can make lines of infantry and shuffle the right person forward. Stuff like that. Ah, there's just a lot to love about this game and its mechanics. I This is definitely my favorite game of the year so far. I have really enjoyed my time with Symphony of War. I think if you enjoy strategy games, you'll like it. If you don't enjoy strategy games, eh, there's a lot of little details, but you don't have to worry about the details. The story, once again... It's probably more appropriate for teens. Definitely some moderate profanity, some dark themes. There are some twists in there that even I think Brandon Sanderson might be proud of. Just saying. Just saying. If you know Brandon Sanderson, you know he usually has some good twists. There's enough foreshadowing of things that, yeah, yeah. You can kind of detect where the twists might happen, but they usually twist it in a way you don't expect. Um, other than that, I do feel like they're light on the details when they do some of the story parts. So hopefully in future updates they might add a little bit more to the texts. Like, uh, yeah, I think my playthrough already covers some of this 
but uh, earlier in the game, you're told, oh, you're probably a Nephilim with your main character. And it's like, wait, what? Why? And it seems that they may have tried to test you with some magic while you were in, in prison, but it's never really stated while you're in the prison until after you're out of it, and then they test you with the Donari Church. But anyway, not a big deal. Other than that, there were a few little mechanics that I had hoped that they would make better, and they did. So organizing the army is now much easier. So once you're in here, you can switch with the mouse wheel or the arrow keys left and right in general to switch to new places, up and down to select one of these things. And yeah, yeah, this works very well. You can also do that while in the artifacts. So as long as you can remember whose artifacts you are trying to change and why, that's good, but you can also just exit back out and find the correct squad and go straight to them. And yeah, so overall, I highly enjoyed the game. I think anybody who enjoys strategy games, turn-based RPGs, uh, people who like lots of little details to keep track of and to grow in power, I think you'll really like it. Just mechanically, the game feels great. And overall... I enjoyed my time with Symphony of War. So leave a like if you've enjoyed this showcase and review, dear viewer. Subscribe for more gaming videos. Comment below on if you think that you would pick up a Symphony of War. I guess. I don't know. At any rate, Dancing Dragon did a great job on this. They're the developer. And I hope you, dear viewer, have a great day.